go to this ground game a lot, specifically with Deion Hankins. See several running backs rotate through for the minors as well. That offensive line, you mentioned the big and experienced. Go to the air for the first time here, and it is Kelly Akari. A lot of people think this could be a close game. Because of that, the holes open up. There is a flag down, but it's Hankins again. This is what they did all of a week ago against Incarnate Word. Big offensive line. It's like a Big Ten built offensive line. Number 52. The penalties decline. Result of the play is a first down. UTEP O line averages 6'4, a little over 307 pounds. That time Northwestern had it snuffed out. Sean McLaughlin leading the way there. This time they pull it and keep it. Gavin Hardison has room and has a first down as they continue to creep closer in the Northwestern territory. Meanwhile, Hardison rolls out, has another complete pass, and room to run after it. For Jeremiah Ballard, the athletic wideout is inside the 10-yard line for this UTEP offense that's rolling after a gain of 25. Shades of the Rutgers game last week where the Northwestern defense was up a long drive, very efficient drive to the opponent. And that bootleg where you fake the toss to one side of the field, and Hardison just looked very comfortable rolling over there back to the boundary to the short side, able to hit Jeremiah Ballard. Inside of the red zone, UTEP for the first time today. They go back to loading up room for the ground game. Deion Hankins again hit 2,000 yards. Yeah, yeah. We have one receiver here. They roll out to the back of the end zone, and a touchdown for touchdown. UTEP. Zach Fryer on the receiving end, the tight end from Florida. His third catch of the season is the opening touchdown of the game here in Evanston. Extra point is up and in from Buzz Flaviano. Short kick, though. This is what you want to see if you're a Northwestern fan. Moving a little quickly here. Take it to him in the second play of the game and throw it over to Bryce Kirks, who's in this week, didn't play a week ago. Time. Lions Township High School just outside of Chicago. Oh, 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 here on first down. Tyrese Knight able to push Cam Porter out of bounds. There's a flag that came in a little late. Here we'll see what this is for. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number 12. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So that advances Northwestern well into UTEP territory on this opening offensive drive. At least was able to be created for A.J. Henning, who they can use in a lot of different ways. They want to get him to touches. That's one of the ways we'll see him out there. Last week. Uh, Paper 
I'm not sure a lot of people around the country expected a couple of quick scores like right. this right out of the gates. Back again is Porter. Able to hear him his way to the five yard line. Again, tried to make something happen there to Kelly Akari. He did throw two interceptions in week one. That was a loss to Jack State. Goes to the air quickly once again to Kelly Akari once again. So now third and seven. Harrison with a clean pocket over the middle. He goes right back to the same target. Akari again. It off to him, he is absolutely met though behind the line of scrimmage. Matt Lawson, <laughs> this time Hardison wants a one on one matchup. A couple of players got in tangled it. going to that Akari matchup that he really likes against there and Johnson. That's going to be coming a storyline. In its own right, drew a flag. Looks like this might be pass interference. I wonder who it's on. Because it yeah. looked to me like the receiver was the one who impeded pass the Pass interference. Offense, mm. number four. 15-yard penalty. <laughs> Looking on the sidelines, the toe tap from Jeremiah Ballard. Flag went down toward the tail end. Zero, the offense went out of bounds on his own, returned inbounds, and was first to touch the pass. This is illegal touching. The penalty is a loss of down at the previous spot. It's fourth down.
Robinson in motion on this 35. Quick slant throw and a first down. Bryce Kurtz makes his second catch of the game, and it's enough to move the chain. Moving quickly again here. His pass incomplete. AJ Odom is in on the coverage over there. Transfer from New Mexico State. Two minutes to go in the opening quarter. And pass out of way from the intended Brian target there, AJ Henning. First worry there. That was definitely. He's trying to be optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, brings up third and ten. The clock was winding down. Second, third down of his drive. Can they go two for two on third down? Out of the reach there of Joseph Hyman. For you, Tyron Simmons. Simmons. It is deep. Tyron Smith back to return this for UTEP. Their dangerous receiver muffed it, picked it back up. Caps already with a conference game under their belt, looking to respond this week. They did on their opening drive, trying to get a defensive stop here. Aiden Hubbard had some pressure there for Northwestern. Hardison back to the air, found a spot, squeezed it into a tight window. What a pass, and then holding on to the contact. He was over on coverage. to the ground game. When they can balance it, it's a challenge for those in defenses. Deion Hankins moving the feet for a first down. Back to it here, gain of four this time. First down, and that should be the final play of the opening quarter. Beginning of the second quarter, in the first ever meeting between UTEP and Northwestern. UTEP with the football and getting pushed back here is Deion Hankins. Sets up third down for UTEP. They've been really good on this down today. Coverage is good downfield. That pass appears to be complete, but definitely not enough for a first down. A.J. Henning back to return this punt. And he was clipped in the process. There, so these flags may be interference. A couple of them came out. That's one of those underrated things about the job of a return specialist. It's a still, still attempt to field the football. Especially if you're not losing it in the sun or anything along those lines. You want to save that yardage for your team, not letting the football continue to bound away from you. But then also, a scenario like that, perhaps you get collision by someone in the coverage team. There is no foul for kick, kick, kick catch interference. The receiver was not in position to catch the kick. During the kick, holding, receiving team number two, half the distance to the goal, it's first and ten. last week trouble protecting the quarterback the way to solve that get the ball out quickly but sometimes it's been so quickly Bryant's lost control of the football not so much here good throw but just overshoots his receiver was looking for Henning there Thanks, Jordan. Yeah. trying to get some breathing room here pressed up against their own goal line Sixty-year guy back on third and seven here, and he's able to find his target. Cam Johnson able to get more yardage after this catch, spinning out of trouble, ultimately upended just inside of UTEP territory. 
was an explosive play that was missing a week ago. You mentioned you were looking for some downfield shots. To go back to Cam Porter on the ground. Several blockers set up here. Maybe a disguise, though, although UTEP had it right from the start. Wildcats have split their last 10 home openers. First against a non power five conference opponent since 2019. Brian able to drop it underneath this time. Coming over in motion with AJ Henning. Seen him in motion a couple of times. That will set up fourth down now. The special teams unit set to come back out. The play was designed in this way for the entire snap. Hoping to leak the running back out of the backfield and then essentially become a lead blocker as AJ Henning ends up receiving the drag pass. It's a good rally to the football by Utah. Now you wonder what's in the head of Tyron Smith after he muffed that last punt. They were able to recover it. And this time, he's got it, but there's a flag down. During the kick, holding kicking team number 35. Ten-yard penalty added to the end of the play. It's first and 10. They've had issues getting off the field on third down again, though, against this UTEP offense. It's been well balanced today. See the numbers are hardest in there. Pretty efficient again. Nine of twelve. Hardison to throw again. Tyron Smith, their top target a week ago. Absolutely met there at the line of scrimmage. Deion Hankins. Two on the play clock here for Hardison. Once again, looking downfield to the sideline. Now on second and long, Hardison throws it out. They set up a screen for Smith. Feels like it is the fourth play, but third down. <laughs> Hardison with time, and that is intercepted. Northwestern one and more takeaways, and they get it from their captain, Bryce Gallagher. Third and long, getting an interception. Get Northwestern the football back, and right away, feeding off the momentum of that interception is Cam Gordon. Rouches back in, dropped it, picked it back up. Was able to stay alive for a few. Sullivan was the guy really battling with Ben Bryant for the job. In camp, Bryant eked it out. He's under pressure here and will take the sack. Maurice Westmoreland, the Houston right Texas sack. native, with a few tackles a week ago. Both the head uh, rushes were really good. to talk about with the experience on his defense. Meanwhile, Tyron Smith is back to return. This punt from the Indiana native Hunter Renner. They just die at about the 28. to have another chance with 5.05 to go. That Eagles formation. This goes back with their O.C. Scotty O'Hara to about 11 years ago when he was at Kansas State where they did this pretty often. You see them do it on third down. Kevin yeah, yeah, Hardison. Hardison. 
Delayed handoff. Flag goes out. Back was Burgess. Holding. Offense, number 79. 10-yard penalty. First down. Both thought at the end of the day, this game would come down to the trenches. UTEP sets themselves back quite a bit here. They will make the tackle out on the edge with Devin Turner with five tackles a week ago. Physical confrontation over there with Garnett Hollis. Now he's able to seal it off and push him out of bounds. Third and long here for Hardison on the UTEP offense, and he will be dragged down. Maybe a chance to take the lead going into the locker room. High game. Maybe the final possession of the half if Northwestern can get something going, but there was pressure coming from Bryant's throwing side. It was Maurice Westmoreland who had a sack earlier in the game. Timeout, UTEP. They're first of the half. 30 seconds. Bryant steps up in the pocket, throws a dart across the seam there, had intentions for Bryce Kurtz. Some good numbers, though, on the backside. Bryant's been countless hours on Zoom with David Bryant before he arrived on campus, going over all the installs. Has to just dump it off here. We'll see what Cam Porter can do. Not about eight. Some of the final two minutes of each half. They direct the clock roll here if the Dimmel doesn't call one of his timeouts. It gets down to one minute. And this is UTEP football. Exactly a minute to work with for Gavin Hardison. And two timeouts left. See if this is caught inbounds. It is. What a pass. Jeremiah Ballard on the receiving end. Hardison quickly goes over the middle and they get closer now inside the 30. Hardison's pass is complete. Always have to factor in the wind here at Ryan Field. Keeping it straight, he wasn't able to do that there. Northwestern will send this to the locker room. This drive. Back to Cam Porter, their starting running back. He's a captain as well. A senior now. You go back to early on in his career. He's able to capture the starting job middle of his freshman season as he now is barreling his way ahead. Time stretching it outside to Kurtz. And Northwestern can at time use up to all of all four of those tight ends. And this time in motion is Cam Johnson going to be brought down on the edge there. Hey, 
into the hands of Johnson to now make it third and six. Trying to get a conversion here, and they do. Over the middle. And just inside of Utah territory goes A.J. Henning. That was a gain of 16. Game as interim head coach for David Braun. about just the hips in that run there. Why not go back to Porter? See if this is enough for a first and down. Over the ball carrier. Keenan Stewart made the tackle. Talk about Keenan Stewart. Looks like they're going to move the chains here. Cam Porter moving so much better this season than he was last year. Just looking again like the athlete that he was early in his career. You see athletes recovering from major ligament issues like an ACL surgery more quickly now. Porter pushed back here by Tyrese Knight. Cam Porter ball carrier. as a freshman. Remember, he was a dope walker award. Watch this player as a sophomore. Going to the air here for the second time today. And they get in the end zone. Touchdown. Walk at touchdown. Thomas Gordon on the receiving end. <laughs> Northwestern takes the lead. Jack Olson to attempt the extra point. Now Jack Olson on to attempt the extra point. The kick is good, this ball. Yeah. Artisan trying to answer back and able to find Kari, who's up near midfield. Speaking of chunk plays, UTEP, there's a flag down. Miners tend to throw it a bit more when they're First down. Foul. Illegal block below the waist, offense number five. 15 yard penalty. First down. It was not intentional, but yes, it was the right foul. Takes the UTEP offense back to first and 22. That is batted down. Passes in. Northwestern 
Adams scored 20 unanswered now. After surrendering an opening drive touchdown in Utah. personal foul it's going to advance this drive ahead for UTEP. And they got Aiden Hubbard there. It's now Hardison with a crossing route over the middle. Nice job from the Northwestern DBs. That time on Tyron Smith to come out and knock that three. It was Devin Turner. Northwestern scored 21 unanswered points since UTEP went down in their opening drive to begin the scoring in this game. Artisan pressured again. It's Hubbard again. Able to redeem himself there. Atone for that last mistake. How about that? It's tend to start to air it out a little more and look a little different when they are down. Dump it off here. Out of the backfield is Mike Franklin. Got past the first hit, but not the second. For his first series, trying to continue with this North off Northwestern offense has been doing it over the last couple of tries down the field. Three minutes to go here in this third quarter. Northwestern has a new signal caller in the game, handing it off again. Dumps it off out of the backfield. It's Hyman again with room. Hyman with green grass ahead. Able to split the defense at the second level. And Joseph Hyman is going to take this all the way, 85 yards. Wanted a little more out of the Northwestern offense this week. In the explosive play category, you've certainly gotten that. Biggest lead of the day. So now UTEP in a big hole here in the second half. And screwing it about is Hardison. Transferring in this season, the 23 year old. was over, Burgess was down. But the battle that played out at quarterback during training camps, one thing I asked Mike Bajakian about, we had a chance to speak to him, just if the, the uncertainty of the offseason, all the upheaval, if that impacted much of how he was able to evaluate the QB. He said that everyone was still in for split reps effect. Smith open on the sideline, and they do convert on fourth down. Another long completion over the middle. This time, the connection is to Jeremiah Ballard.
Pressure from the Northwestern D-line has been good today. Artisan sneaks away from it on the move to the back of the end zone. There's a flag down. Wonder if he was out of bounds here. This happened earlier in the game. That appears to be the case. It's Tyron Smith. Number one of the offense went out of bounds on his own, came back in bounds, and was first to touch the pass. This is illegal touching. The penalty is a loss of down at the previous spot. It's second down. Second time we've had an illegal touching call today. Handed off here, and a crease does open up for a first down gain for Torrance Burgess. Able to pick up about 12 there. It's good number two back for them. They grind their way ahead for a few more yards into the teeth of that Northwestern defense. Also played your Hawkeyes back in 1986. And Artisan is dropped once again by the ankles. The linebackers are really showing up today for Northwestern. Bryce Gallagher had an interception earlier, gets a tackle there. Off here to Mike Franklin, another back on the depth chart for I UTEP. A blend of both. Scotty O'Hara's offense trying to plunge through. And right now that spot looks short. It is. David Braun will love that with his defensive background. First and ten Northwestern over on the nine-yard line. They've more than doubled what they averaged a season ago in the 1-11 season. Cam Porter wrestled to the ground. At running back, you're trying to replace Evan Hull now with the Indianapolis Colts. Cam Porter has stepped up and kind of showed he'll be that number one back this year with a couple of good ones behind him. And the wide receivers, Bryce Kurtz got involved today too. We didn't see him a week ago. Again, remember Ben Bryant left the game earlier, returned to the sideline with the upper body injury. Brendan Sullivan on the sideline with the headset on. So Coach Braun opts to go to Holinsky. He's already got an 85-yard pass. We have a UTEP player down. There's Trey John Hughie. Well, it was the he, he was injured during the spring, but they said this was his best fall camp. Best fall camp that Olinsky has had since he's been with Northwestern, and Mike DeJakin has been his offensive coordinator since he transferred in from South Carolina. And anyone who knows the story of Ryan Olinsky, we certainly covered it a lot here on the Big Ten Network. The tragedy that the Olinsky family suffered in losing his older brother Tyler years ago. He was the number two pro-style quarterback in the country when he came out of high school. Began his college career at South Carolina. There's been several quarterbacks you referenced a couple of years here. Eight different guys have been behind center. Northwestern on offense. Bring Lausch in here. We've seen him in these deliberate running situations. There's a good platform set up on the outside from Gordon. Springs Lausch down the sideline. Broussard pushes him out, but not before a lengthy gain on that designed run. That's why they brought him in, gain of 47. See the wheels of Jack Lausch off the mesh. Every time UTEP sees number 12 come into the game at QB, they should be prepared for the QB run game. They weren't able to set the edge against Jack Lausch. Thomas Gordon, by the way, had a passing reception for a touchdown earlier, and now he sets up a huge block there. Showcasing the versatility of his skill set. They bring him in again. The 
Sometimes Henning in motion. They ran to the opposite side of that motion. So Henning basically a decoy there for a Cam Porter run. That's another first down. This time it is Henning coming across in another sweep look. Stayed in bounds to creep within the five yard line of UTEP. They hand it off again and into the end zone. It's Henning again. This third down play, Northwestern gets another defensive stop. As UTEP is going to bring out that unique package again, this time on fourth down to try to get the one yard they need to keep the chains moving. It may just be seen if they can get Northwestern to jump off sides with that late stem like we saw last time. And Northwestern for the second time today gets a fourth and one stop. His way to becoming the first Northwestern coach again, interim or full time, to win their home debut. Well, they avoid what would have been a 13 game losing streak. Last time that happened to Northwestern was a few weeks away from your 11th birthday. <laughs> Meanwhile, Laos throws it for the first time, and that is tipped off. Harris returning this kick here for UTEP. Three forty-five to go in this fourth quarter. His defense can maybe put the exclamation point on it.
100 seconds to go here in Evanston. 38-7, the Northwestern lead. Meaningful win in a variety of different ways. Defense has showcased what they can be at their best. I doubt they were. I know I certainly wasn't. A lot of people again had Northwestern as the underdog in this game. <laughs> False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. To avoid a runoff, UTEP has called its first time out of the half. Northwestern defense was led so long by Mike Hankowitz. UTEP, they're second in the half. 30 seconds. They were the ones that only scored seven points a week ago, trying to flip that script today. Oh, it's right on cue. Another interception for this defense. The third of the day, Joe DeHaan on the pick. And brought in David Brown. That is such a cool way to cap it off. By the way, we have Michigan State and Richmond coming up for you soon here. In Evanston, though, they'll celebrate this one and get the monkey off the back that was the losing streak. That's a smile that means so much for interim head coach David Braun.